Uh, hello, and thank you all for uh, being present online and also physically to this conference. I have the pleasure and maybe the whole pressure as well to present uh, the first. So I will try to uh, to live up to, to this challenge. And uh, I'm really happy to present this work uh, here in Toulouse, uh, where Bruno came from, also obviously I can say, and which was a big work during my PhD thesis that I completed a few weeks ago. So uh, in this presentation, we'll discuss about rational behavior, basically in community-based blockchains. And without going too, 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 too much into details about what a blockchain is, I want to just give uh, a, a small information and the big things we want from a blockchain. So first we want it to be a distributed ledger. So basically all the participants should locally have the same ledger and they want to, uh, to keep it no central authority we want it to be temporary resistant so modification of the information already in the ledger should be hard to uh, modify and even impossible and also to be built in an append only manner so we can only add information at the end and not in the middle because that will somehow be like a modification the participant can communicate only by sending messages to each other and basically a blockchain is just a chain of blocks hence the name blockchain where each block is linked to the prior block in the chain by uh, an, a, a unique identifier that we call a hash. To build a blockchain, one of the most known blockchain is Bitcoin. And what Bitcoin does, you have, for example, two participants here, I and J, that want to add blocks in their blockchain. So the first one that is able to produce its block will add it and, produce, and send it to everyone else. For example, the I player add its block, will propagate it, G will add it as well. Then let's say G found a block first, propagate it, everyone finds it, and so on. But what can happen is that they both find a block at the same time. And in this situation, we say that we have a fork because if we have a third uh, participant, for example, then we can see that it has two blocks. It doesn't know which block to take, it doesn't know what to do. So we need to uh, solve this problem because in critical situations, we don't know when the, the, the transactions are, are being done or are being completed. So we want to avoid uh, the fraud situations. To do that, there is an abstraction that exists in, in distributed computing that is called the consensus problem. And the consensus problem is defined as follows. We say that an algorithm implements the consensus if and only if it satisfies the three following properties. Termination, which says that every participant should actually decide, so they need to agree on something at the end. Then validity, which says that any value that is decided by a participant that is following the protocol, the algorithm is actually valid with respect to a validity predicate that depends on the application and also the agreement property, which says that if two a participant or players that are following the algorithm decide, then they should decide the exact same thing. If we are able to satisfy those three properties, then all the participants that are following their algorithm will always decide something and decide the common value. To use the uh, consensus to build a blockchain, what can be done is the following. First, we have the first block in the blockchain that is called the Genesis block, that will actually set up the whole system. And in setting up the whole system, it will also decide on the committee of fixed size that is known by everyone. That committee will run the consensus algorithm to produce a block, and they will propagate the block to the whole network. Then uh, a new committee will be selected thanks to the whole history for the two blocks. That committee will do basically the same, and so on and so forth. And there are already blockchains that exist that exist that are doing this. For example, Tender Mint or Hot Stuff that is actually at the core of the Facebook Project Libra blockchain. And once a block is produced, then all the committee members that work basically are rewarded for, for their work. And uh, to be totally frank with you, there are a lot of analysis about those blockchains already that exist. But one thing that is uh, really important is that they consider only two types of participants in the system. So we'll call them from now on players, only the obedience that are actually following the protocol exactly forever and also the Bayesian team that can actually model any kind of bugs in the system or malicious behavior. So we only have those two uh, types of participants in our system. And one question we wanted to know is, 
are these blockchains resilient or resistant to rational behaviors? And in particular, if we have participants that want to maximize their game, are we still able to uh, ensure, ensure the consensus properties? And I want, just want to recall that the three properties are termination, agreement, and validity. So in the rest of the presentation, we will introduce the rational, the rational players, and then we will see how uh, the system evolves with their presence. So before doing that, uh, the model we, we consider. So we consider that we have another set of, of, of players in our committee. So uh, N is known, and the order of all the players is also known. They are known, and we only have them. So only one committee at a time, one block at a time. Then we assume that messages are synchronous, and a message is cannot be lost. So if a message is sent, everyone will receive the message, basically. And we consider that we have two types of players. So the strategy that we call type S, that want to maximize their game by reducing the cost of executing the protocol, and the adversaries for so the type A, that just do want to prevent the consensus. So they don't want the consensus to be achieved. And we assume that a player knows if it is uh, adversary or strategic, and is also knows its position in the committee, basically. It doesn't necessarily know the, the type of the other participant in the committee. And we assume that they are also even, evenly distributed in the system. Uh, under this model, basically, we can ensure agreement. So if you recall, I, if you recall, I wanted to talk about the three properties of the consensus, we can just forget about agreement for the moment and we'll focus on termination and, and validity. So how uh, committee-based blockchain works in a nutshell. So it works in multiple rounds. So we are, all the players are trying to solve the consensus during each round. During the first round, we'll have one, one player that will be the proposer that will propose its block to the whole other, other committee. Then the participant, once they receive the proposal, they will vote or not on the proposal if it is valid or not, basically. And if we have sufficiently many votes, then we consider that the block is produced. And that's it. If the block didn't receive enough votes, which is new, our threshold, then we go to the next round. We do exactly the same thing with the new proposer. And we continue that until we reach a decision. Basically, uh, if we focus a bit on the different things that are being done here, we have a proposal, uh, a checking of validity, and also a vote. And we can uh, put them uh, here and with emphasis. I don't know if you are seeing the bulb part. So the proposer actually generates a valid block normally that will be propagated. Then the others will collect and then check if the proposal is really valid. And then they may vote if that block is valid or not. We can put the actions on these key steps of our algorithm. And uh, we can put a decision tree that will model that. For example, if the participant is the proposer, then it has two choices. So either proposing an invalid block or proposing a valid block. And if a participant receives uh, a, vote, a block, basically, it can uh, check if the block is valid or not and then decide to vote or not depending on the validity. One thing important is that if the, part, if the player did not check the validity, it doesn't have any validity information, but can still vote or not, however. But if it checked, then it has the valid information and can, in either case, uh, vote or not vote. So we have that as our actions, and then we can try to understand the strategies that each participant can have. Do not forget that we have two types of players in our, in our game. So we have the check, we have cost on each actions. So for example, checking validity or sending a vote. And those costs can represent the, um, the cost of executing the protocol or the electricity cost and everything like that. And we suppose that any strategic, any strategic actually when checking the validity pays a cost C check. If it sends a vote, pays a cost C send. And if a block is produced, so a block is added to the blockchain, then the, then the one that sends a vote gets a reward R. And we assume that the reward is bigger than the costs, which are bigger than zero, basically. And we also assume that if somehow they manage to make an invalid block accepted and added to the block, the whole ecosystem pays 
because that we call kappa that is way bigger than r and the goal of each strategic participant is to maximize its expected gain basically this uh, the, the the reward minus all the cost for the uh, adversaries we have a lexicographical preferences actually where uh, since they just want to prevent the consensus they do not care about the cost of their actions basically and uh, they are happy if they make an invalid block accepted and added to the chain otherwise if there is no block that is accepted well it's it's also still better because the consensus is not achieved and in the worst case an invalid block is uh, is added we have the consensus they are not happy but they cannot do better uh, better than that and we assume that we have strictly more than uh, zero adversaries in in the committee we and we denote that number f and f is not necessarily known by everyone they just know that there is at least one uh, adversary the participants will have different uh, informations so for example uh, all the votes that happened before so in the round before are public knowledge so everyone knows uh those uh, those words but each one has a uh, private information so for example if a player checked it knows that it checked and then it knows if the block checked is valid or not if a player did not check that player did not doesn't have that information and also we have an asymmetry of information now where uh the strategic participant a strategic uh, player, excuse me, only it knows its type, its own type, and doesn't know the types of everyone else in the in the committee. But the other adversaries do know that information. So basically, they know who are the other adversaries and who are the other strategic. So we have an asymmetry of information here. So to uh, work and understand the 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 whole behavior of participant and how the the system will evolve we need to use uh, so the solution concept of perfect bayesian equilibrium because first we have uh, incomplete information everyone doesn't know who is the others and we have asymmetrical information between the different type of players and basically uh, by a perfect bayesian equilibrium is uh, is a situation where each for each player is maximizing its own objective anticipating rationally what the others will do then we we'll draw, are drawing in, uh, rational inferences uh, from what they observed from the other players to actually guess a bit the type of the of the different players according to base law when possible and uh, they're always picking their best action no matter where when they uh, when they start basically the game so we we'll use this concept to understand the different uh, the different equilibria that can arise and um, Oops, I forgot the slide. <laughs> the question now is what are what are being done in uh, committee-based blockchain in presence of rational participants? Now we can ask the question by uh, okay, what are the different uh, perfect Bayesian equilibria that are in the game? And if these perfect Bayesian equilibria are satisfying the consensus properties, basically. First, we can see that we have optimal strategies for each of the participants, for example, uh, it strategic uh, the strategics will always want to propose a valid block because if they propose an invalid block that invalid block may be accepted and then they will all pay cost basically and in the contrary adversaries actually always want to propose invalid block because then the blocks will be accepted and then they will be happy if the consensus is not is not achieved and also actually when they receive uh, the proposal they always check uh, the validity because they do not care about the cost basically and they always vote for invalid blocks only and these are the optimal strategies for both type of players and so in the in the rest we'll just focus on the different other actions that are possible and the first uh the first uh equilibrium you have is without going a bit a bit too much into all the text we don't know exactly the value of the uh, number of adversaries in the in the system we just know that they are less than the threshold for accepting a block right in that situation we cannot ensure termination basically all the strategy knows that by sending a message uh, alone nothing will be accepted they know that everyone else is not sending so they prefer not sending as well because if they send a message 
their uh, votes will they will pay the cost of voting for nothing because the block will not be accepted anyway and that is this uh, equilibrium no, no one is happy we don't have termination oops and that's it well our question before is not uh, well answered but we can you can go more to understand what is really happening and we have a second equilibrium where actually even validity can be broken where still we don't know exactly the value of the number of adversaries in our committee basically but and they can actually also be they don't necessarily need to be less or more than new our, our minimal threshold and there everyone is voting without checking the validity basically i know that everyone else is voting no matter what is happening so the block will always be accepted and added in that case if i do not send a vote if, if the block is accepted i'm not getting a reward but if i send a vote at least i'm getting a reward even if the block accepted is invalid at the end so i i would always prefer uh signing a vote without even checking uh if an adversary proposed an invalid block is added but if it if it is a strategic that proposes then the block is valid well, we cannot ensure validity basically and uh as i said that is due to the that is not even linked directly to the number of adversaries we have in the committee which is actually a really strong result if we have even one adversary and the new value is equal to n minus one so we have way more uh, strategic this equilibrium still exists which is really something not good but we still wanted to have a good equilibrium that satisfies both property and uh first we under we try to understand what happened and why we do we have this equilibrium first all the players are not pivotal so basically none of them has all the possible actions to change the whole outcome so if everyone else is doing something they prefer following them because that will not change anything and uh, we're trying to avoid uh, these kind of uh, situations so in a good equilibrium where everything will be nice we need to make the, the players pivotal so make each of them such that if they change their strategy then they can make a good thing happen to do that we need the following if uh, the uh, if the proposer is strategic so type s then we want the proposed block to be accepted directly so to get at least new votes and we even wanted to get n minus n minus f why because first the block is produced and then if only one uh, strategic didn't vote then the block is not accepted anymore so not getting a reward and if the proposer is an adversary then the block will be invalid anyway and we wanted to get less than new votes and actually we want to get even new minus one vote why because first the block will not be accepted and added but also if a strategic deviates and now sends a vote where it shouldn't then we will have exactly new votes the block will be accepted and since since it is an invalid block then they will all pay cost kappa that is bigger than the reward that is what we want and we found an equilibrium where both properties are satisfied but to have this equilibrium we need to know exactly the number the, the number of adversaries in our system we don't need to know where they are placed but we need to know exactly how many they are if you have that information and if the cost of accepting an invalid block is high enough then we have the following equilibrium we are asking all the all the players that have index between one and n minus new plus f plus one all those are that have an index there they are ordered and they know their index to always check the validity of the proposal and send a vote if and only if the the block is valid and all the others if they are placed after n minus new plus f plus one they can they will always send a vote no matter what happens and if we reach the round f plus one basically we can also say that well all the strategy can just directly vote because in this uh in this situation 
whenever a valid block is proposed, the block will be accepted. But if somehow we reach the round F plus one, then we know that all the first F blocks are invalid. So the, first, the F plus one is, uh, is uh, valid for sure, and then they don't need to, to check the validity. We have both properties because we will always terminate at round F plus one at most, and all the blocks that are accepted are necessarily valid, basically. And uh, that is our good equilibrium. And since I'm out of time, I will just conclude uh, this presentation with the analysis we did on understanding actually the rational behaviors in committee-based blockchains. So the blockchain that are using committees and consensus to add new blocks. And we also consider in, an, in our analysis, the presence of malicious players. So the players that are adversaries and want to break the whole system. We found that we do have a good equilibrium that do satisfy all the properties we want in uh, in a blockchain, but actually those equilib this equilibrium is not unique. As for example, I showed that we can break both validity or termination. Free writing can occur, so we need to pay attention on how to uh, to design these uh, these rewarding. And what we want to do next is to first extend our work to more uh, set things, less hypotheses, having, for example, less than a, a synchronous communication where messages can be lost, for example, and also analyze this, uh, this equilibrium in, for real people and see exactly what they want to do. Thank you. <laughs>